Winter, in particular the end of winter, can be a very difficult time to harvest wild edibles. By this time of year, our ancestors would be at the end of their food stores and eagerly awaiting the fresh greens and starches that were about to emerge from under the frozen landscape. Today we consume diets that are high in salt, sugar, and refined ingredients that would not have been available to our ancestors. Their diets would have been seasonal, based on what was available at the time, and when in a quantity to gather in a sustainable fashion, would have been preserved for later use. Today we explore the unexplored. There's very little literature on the edibility of catkins, but a cross-reference of numerous texts and documents insinuates that our ancestors used these protein-rich flower spikes as a trail nibble, flower extender, and famine food. If you know where to look, they can be harvested in large quantity with little effort expended. Today we'll be cooking and consuming three species of catkins in three different methods. We'll be looking at the beaked hazelnut, speckled alder, and paper birch. All three species are members of the birch family and their catkins can be found on them all year round. We will be preparing them as a trail nibble, boiled, and as a flower extender. Here you see the beaked hazelnut. There's little to no documentation of the edibility of hazelnut catkins. The easiest way to find this plant is along forest edges and the small catkins are brownish green in the winter months and grow on this 10 foot high brown and white striped bark shrub. It can be found easily during the summer months as it grows delicious nuts that have a fuzzy green beaked sheath. Hmm. Kind of like a sweet, sawdusty flavor to it. I can kind of see uh, how it might be a good binder for some flour. Slight, slight bitterness, but not that bitter. And honestly, if I was starving, not that, not too bad. Female paper birch catkins can be found throughout the winter. Young catkins were sometimes used to flavor salads, meat dishes, and cooked vegetables. Hmm. A little more bitter than the, uh, Hazelnut, quite a bit more bitter, still palatable, kind of tastes like celery. And sawdusty. So I'm just walking over to the creek bed where I think there might be some speckled alder. And I've allowed that birch um, catkin to settle in my palate. And I'm getting a little bit of a uh, Almost like a black licorice -y, strong root beer type flavor with a lingering bitterness. Um, so not, not terrible, but uh, I think cooking it in some fashion, whether or not it's uh, roasting or mixing it with some sort of pine cambium um, or boiling out some of the bitterness will definitely uh, help with the palatability. So just as I suspected, there's some speckled alder, which you'll typically find growing uh, along creek sides or wet areas. I just gotta find a way across here. This will be interesting. Yeah. oh I thought I was close. Here we have the speckled alder. I'm expecting these to be quite bitter. Hence why they call it the speckled alder. 
member of the Birch family. It smells almost like peppery. Ah. Uh. Okay. Tastes like a uh, like a bitter sawdusty perfumey potato. But I'm going to pick a few more of these and uh maybe we'll be able to boil some of that out or cook some of that out. We'll see. Quick and dirty, bud. So we have the boiled hazelnut catkins. They've been boiling for five minutes. Hmm. Still pretty sawdusty. But they actually have a little bit of a sweet flavor to it. Not bad. Definitely took a, what little bitterness was out. Okay, so here we have the speckled alder catkins. And uh, they've been boiling for 10 minutes. I'm not expecting a lot out of this, but I'm starting to think that uh, it might be beneficial to actually boil these first then crush them down mix them with some flour as a flour extender so here we go very bitter um definitely took a lot of the bitterness out but i mean you'd have to boil these for a really long time And finally, the birch. Still a little bit of bitterness to it. Still sawdusty. Very sawdusty. A little bit sweeter now that it's been cooked. But still a little bit of that bitter licorice-y aftertaste. What I'm thinking is I'm going to cook some of these up. And uh, then I'm going to be mixing in my flour, a little bit of maple syrup, sweeten it up and balance that bitterness. And uh, make some uh, catkin cakes. Here we grind the catkins into small pieces to be mixed with flour. This could be done in large quantity with a mortar and pestle in a hollowed out log. Any kind of flour could be used, 
whether it's wild rice flour, cattail flour, or wapato flour. I then added a bit of water. And of course some homemade maple syrup just to balance the potential bitterness and to add that nice woodsy flavor. I then mixed all three sets of boil catkins separately in the same fashion as shown here. Here we go, here's the first sample. This is the birch maple, uh, birch catkin maple syrup flavored um, dough. Mm. You know, that maple syrup just counteracts that little bit of bitterness. It's actually quite nice. You get that little bit of woodsy uh, flavor to it. Not bad. All right, so we have our alder, speckled alder, catkin maple bread. And all I'm doing is, instead of this time, I'm going to actually cook it on a stick, kind of bannock style here. That way I'm not dirtying up my pot anymore. There you go. On to the fire she goes. This is the alder catkin. Um, I just can't get into the alder catkin. To even cooking it like this, after even having boiled it, uh, I don't know. You'd be, you have to be pretty hungry. Thumbs down. And I think I'm saving the best for last year. That's the uh, hazelnut mixture. Get her into you. All right, and the final one we have is the hazelnut. Not bad. Definitely takes first prize. Hazelnut Kakin Maple Bannock. I could eat this whole thing. It's pretty good.